All right, so I'm about to install my Webasto diesel heater. I bought this thing over the summer, and now it's starting to get cold, so I want to install it finally. So the heater's going to go right down there, and that box is accessed from the outside. I'm going to put an auxiliary tank in the box. Rather than explaining all this mess, I'm just going to start. So here is the faceplate. I'm just making sure it's square. Okay, now to trace around the faceplate, I need to cut away the rubber floor so it'll rest flush on the wood. Alright, you want to make sure before you mark your markings that the face plate's facing the right way. You'll see that there, the fuel port needs to face in the way the heater is going to blow the hot air out. So yeah, just figuring out what I'm going to cut out. So I have the holes that I have to cut away, that whole square. So the intake, exhaust, and the fuel line will all run right through there. And the four outer dots are where I'll screw in the plate to the floor. So for the square I'm cutting out, just fill in pilot holes. Gonna have to cut out pieces to do a frame around the hole just to protect the wood from the heat and water. So, this is RTV gasket maker, high heat stuff that I'm putting on each piece of the frame. Just putting that and sandwiching it in there, putting a couple screws in each piece of, of frame. Here is up, up top. Frame came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I do make um, plates that, you, that have a, a bit of a frame around it to protect the, your RV floors. But I already had this one and didn't have the money to replace it. I just wanted to do the job from what I had. Okay, I'm pretty much just emptying my RTV gasket maker tube here. This is what I had left over from my manual locking hubs job I did. And I just really wanted to make sure everything was like really airtight and sealed in good. So yeah, it looks like ketchup everywhere. Alright, just get that in place, press down nice, and screw it in. All right, now to put the heater in place. So I just feed the electrical through the hole. That's the air intake port as well. You'll see that there's a little slot in the air intake port that you put the, uh, the electrical in and then put the tube 
on the port and clamp it in. And for the exhaust hose, that's the stainless steel hose that goes onto the metal fixture too for the heater and has a more robust clamp. So you want to make sure you get that real tight. Now the little rubber gasket for the fuel intake on the bottom of the heater. So yeah, get that in place on there and then put one clamp, screw it in real good. And then put the other clamp in, but don't tighten it down until you get your fuel line in. Here I'm drilling a small hole to uh, fit this flip part in. That's a it's a clamp that holds the silencer for the air intake. So yeah, that silencer just screws on with the clamp to the hose for the air intake. It makes it more quiet, sucking air in. Pretty easy. Just drill a hole and push that clamp in. I'm Phoebe Judge. This is criminal. Here, this is a, just a piece of aluminum. I'm bending into some sort of a fender just to protect uh, the whole heater unit and headlines from debris coming up from the tire. The only real place I could, the place I wanted to put it, it was right um, by the tire well. So, yep, there it is. Uh, it worked, turned out pretty good. I think it'll work just fine. I think it'd have been protected. It'd have been durable enough without it, but it feels good to have it on. Okay, here's footage of me drilling the fuel line hole in the wrong location. It's just getting dark and getting late. I just, I didn't film the right one, but I fixed this one and then drilled the correct hole. But here's the next day I'm putting in the, uh, the holder for the fuel tank. Yeah, this stuff worked pretty well. I also used it to hold the muffler in place. Again, I'm, I'm going to replace this fuel tank with a six gallon tank sometime in the future, near future. But this will do fine for just for now. Just cutting some fuel line for measuring it out. Attaching the uh, rubber gaskets to the fuel filter. Putting all the clamps on. Feeding the line in. And again, you want to make sure it butts up all the way against the, the filter. Here I'm mounting it at a 90 degree angle with the fuel line facing the right way. All right, down underneath the truck. I wrestled with this pump for a while. I didn't want to drill any holes. So I found this existing hole. I just pre-drilled a new washer so it'll take up all the slack in the hole. Now I'm just making sure I have the, right, the correct amount of fuel line to run from the hole I drilled. So you want to mount the uh, pump at a slight angle. Now to do the wiring for the pump. So split it and cut it. But before you strip the wire, you put those two rubber grommets on each wire because they're really tight. So before you strip the housing off, slide those on. 
So then once you do that, strip it off. Then you gotta line up the the metal conductor plugs, and then they cup around the blue grommet, and then you cramp on the plugs. That's not probably the technical way to explain it, but that's just how I did it. And the the plugs uh, cramp on pretty easily. I just use my butt connector cramp thing to to sandwich them together. What? Now to uh, put the plug cover on. And you'll see there's some that are a square and then the other ones are like a minus symbol. And it's pretty obvious which one goes where. So you just push it in and wait to hear the click. You know it's in there good. Let's tape it up a little bit. This is going to be underneath the car. Okay, now to put the plug cover on the one that's attached to the heater. The plug prongs were already attached on this one, so it's good to use that as a reference on how to do the other one. Yep, then just snap them in, and then plug that end into the pump. And you're set, as far as needs, underneath. So, back in, in the camper, this, like... Wire harness plugs right into the heater. It's pretty simple. And then the grommet goes there. Cover on. Alright, now to hook it up to the fuse box. Again, they give me way uh, too much wire. So you can run it wherever you need to. But everything's really contained right in this corner. So I cut off most of it. Cut it. Spliced it. Just put those connectors on to go onto the fuse box. So this is the 15 amp fuse that came with the unit. Okay, nice. Power's on. The fan's blowing. It's just not hot yet. You have to restart these things a few times to prime the system, get fuel all the way through the lines to the heater. But it did start burning hot, blowing, blowing really hot. And uh, I am going to replace this tank. I've said that a couple of times maybe by now. I'm going to get a six gallon tank with a quick release fuel line so I can just take it out and fill it. But here you can see there's a little sleeve. I use some extra fuel line hose as a protector when I drill through the floor. Yeah, blowing hot. I'm gonna get a muffler also. So yeah, this is just the spaghetti of fuel line, exhaust, intake, wires. Going back to the pump right there next to that side fender. Here it ticking. It's really not too bad inside the camper. Yeah, just to show you again. That's the uh, fuel line going up, tied in with uh, the bundle of the electrical and the fuel line coming from the tank all going through the pump or to the pump I put just the plastic cover protector stuff around everything and zip tied everything together And then the exhaust winds around that fender I bent. And I tied it up with some of that gutter stuff. I don't know what that stuff is actually for. Mounting. Yeah, and then right out and away from the car. So it all turned out really well. I was like super excited that it's all working. This is about a three day job for me.
We're going to do a test trip up in Bigelow Preserve in uh, northern Maine. So this is me just about to pull into the camp. doesn't really need it but it is a little soft and sandy so I figured just test it out run it when I can came with the camper when I imported it. So I thought that was a good score. Alright, just a little hike around the camping spot. It was a free camp spot too. It was really nice. I'll definitely be back up there. Just to prove that it was kind of cold out. Heater on, see how it goes. So this is the tank before I went to bed, and then next shot's tank when I woke up. So I burned through it all. Definitely gonna get a bigger tank in summary. It's great, need a bigger tank, and a muffler, and a thermostat. All right, thanks for watching.